geschlafen? Oder hat sie einfach durch die Nacht gepartiert? <lacht> Weil wir wissen, wir richtig zu Party Samstag, wir wissen das, oder? Warte, wer hier kann kein Deutsch? Who doesn't speak German? Okay. It's okay, no problem. For you, as a personal favor for you, I'll, I'll go in English. It's not because it's easier for me. It's for you guys. Good. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. I'm excited. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. But I'm ready to start another day because I'm excited for our first panel. Are you excited for our first panel? Do you think I'm wasting time? <laughs> Do you want to start the show? Yeah! Well, then, from the hit series Vikings, <laughs> we have Lucy Martin, <laughs> Alicia Agnesen, <laughs> Alex Krupp Anderson, <laughs> Marco Ilso, <laughs> Peter Franzen, <laughs> Jordan Patrick Smith? <laughs> Did I forget anybody? Clive! Clive Stanley? <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody else. Catherine! Catherine Winnick! The Catherine Winnick, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> or not! <laughs> we could just do the, we'll just have an intimate show. <laughs> guys, this is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad that you're here again. I'm glad that nobody got in a motorcycle accident or anything. <laughs> we're not gonna, I have no idea what he's talking We're about. not going to say anything about that. Hi, people. Germany! <laughs> you know, yesterday, we played the worst game ever. I know. <laughs> Just talking about it, we're like, oh my gosh, please no more games. Say that. I had Toyota ringing me last night. I got a brilliant endorsement deal. It was amazing. <laughs> I, I, you know, and, and I, I really do need to make up for it. I have a better, I have a better game today. Oh. I need, I need three vict I mean volunteers. <laughs> because, because we have a flip chart. A flip chart. Lucy's game. Bring, yeah. Can you bring the flip chart up here? I will get the flip chart and bring it up here. <laughs> Is it too heavy? <laughs> That's not too heavy. Because... We're going to play fiction. Math somehow. We're going to play fiction. Who's a good drawer? Uh, Lucy! <laughs> go Lucy, go Lucy, go! Go Lucy, go Lucy, go! Alright. I'm going to write a word. It has to do. It has to do with Vikings. Vikingary. What? Dictionary. <laughs> yeah, dictionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very. It's very easy. This is not going better than yesterday so far. <laughs> the anticipation is killing me. It's a longbow. It does. It doesn't matter. It's a horse. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a submarine. It's Travis oh. You have like 30 seconds, because we, we, we don't want to waste time. No pressure. Okay. 30 seconds. An axe. 
Go! Three, two, one, go! Go! Shoot. Travis Hill. Skateboard. <laughs> team, team That's it. Travis Well done, thank you very much, Lucy. Alex, since you guessed oh. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, let's do. <laughs> yes, we're gonna do the penis. Long penis and your ass. Are you ready? No dick jokes today. Ready? Gonna see what I say, we can't say. Move your fat ass, baby. <laughs> it's a stick, it's a spear. That's a boat! It's a boat! Long boat! Yes! Good luck! Alright, this is the last one. Five, you got it? You're, you're up next. This is the last one. I promise. I promise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ready? No pressure. Go! Shield yeah, yeah. yeah. lock! Now, <laughs> now, what I would like to do with these, and there was a very specific reason I did this. Um, Catherine, you have an organization yes. that is supporting the Ukraine. And what I would like to do is I would like you guys um, all to sign these uh, pictures. Everybody autograph these, these wonderful, that amazing these wonderful, of amazing art. pictures of art. <laughs> Um, and then we're gonna auction them off and give the proceeds to the Winning Foundation. How does that sound? Thank you, Andy. Thanks for mentioning that. It's, uh, I started a foundation, I'm sure if you were here yesterday, you heard I come from a strong Ukrainian background, I'm first generation Canadian, um, also Ukrainian, and as we all know, it's really hard times. So I started a foundation called the Winnick Foundation and 100% of the proceeds go to the humanitarian efforts to help Ukraine. So, thank you. You can find it on my Instagram. Before, um, before we open it up to the public questions, we've got a microphone on our left and we've got a microphone on our right over here. Um, I want to ask, of, of the crew, because you guys seem to be getting, a, not of the crew, of the, well, crew too, I guess, of the uh, cast, you guys seem to get along very well. Who's the, uh, who's the straight man? Who's like the s most serious in the cast? And it doesn't have to be I don't think any of us. We all have our days. That's what I think. We're all like a big eclectic bunch of morons, so, you know. We're kind of quite mixed. Oh, uh, maybe Jasper. Jasper, did Jasper. 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 Jasper said eight words to me for like six months and then like spoke to me for two days. Maybe straight. he just didn't like you then. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say Gustav, but Gustav has his days oh, where he's Gustav's like, oh, Gustav's yeah, yeah, he's pretty still alive, but quiet. Yeah, Jasper is quite uh, serious in his own, own way. He's a gentle soul and he wants to be sure about his surroundings and people around him. So. The bigger question, who's the bigger jokester? That's the next question. <laughs> that is going to be a competition because there's at least like five or six jokesters on this floor right now, but there's, we also got Travis. Oh, nice. Take that joke. Clive, <laughs> <laughs> who do you think? Who do you think is the biggest? Prank? Travis is usually the biggest one. He's, but he's the kind of he was the ringleader that started it. This one, this one's a big one. Alex is a big trickster. <laughs> Um, no, I don't believe that at all. But I think that's the thing, we, we, filmed, we filmed in, you know, about an hour outside of Dublin. Sometimes, you know, the, the Irish say the weather is changeable. Um, you've got hailstorms, you've got rain, it's all, you know, so you're filming at the top of a mountain sometimes and, and days along. And the way to get through it is to keep each other on their toes. And we are always just, that's where it starts. It's not just we're all a bunch of crazy pranksters, it's kind of, it's a nice way to just keep everyone's morale up. If, if, if anyone feels down, anyone's having a bad day, anyone's got a hangover, anyone's ill, anyone's just got some grief back home, it's the easiest way to do it is just to keep pranking, keep joking, and just keeps the morale up. For the, not just for us, but for the crew who are out there, you know, sometimes right in the elements, but we're in a tent in the nice warm tent, they're still out there setting up shots. So it's, 
It's kind of something that we all did in Vikings, not just the cast, it was the cast, the crew, everyone from the catering staff to the actors. It was just kind of kept us all on our toes and kept us light and fun. And also, we can get away with having food battles on set because like, we're in the mud anyway, <laughs> so costume department is not going to kill us if there's a little, I don't know, whatever, mud, food, whatever there's on our, our costumes, they're not going to kill us because 30 seconds later we're going to be in the mud. So we're all good. It's, 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 it's a lovely set to be on. To I've, a joke I've always felt sorry for the hair and makeup team after lunch, especially with all the men's beards and all the food that got stuck in the beers, they had to comb it out. And um, yeah, that was especially Rolo. Oh, I would, I would sometimes, like three days later, I'd kind of find like some raisins for my music. <laughs> so fresh. Let's, because I already see there's a line, let's open it up to the public questions over on our left, your right. There's a young lady in a pink shirt over there, pink blazer. Yeah. Hi guys, I'm so excited to meet you, all of you. I absolutely love the show, I absolutely love all of you. The podcast is just awesome. I can! And my question is for all of you, but I would especially love Alex to answer it, because Alex, you're my absolute favorite of all of you. And my question is, is if there could have been a guest star on Vikings that you wish you would have had, which one would you have chosen? Oh my god. Uh, oh, freaking <laughs> F. I mean, and I can pick from the entire world. Yes. Like, yes. of all my favorite. Well, I would bring Heath Ledger bags alive and bring him on set. There's so many people out there. I'm a, I love Javier Bardem, I love uh, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, uh, there's a lot of, of uh, Meryl Streep, God damn it! Oh my God! Meryl Streep is a shit. Imagine friend. me, Meryl, <laughs> Meryl Streep on set of Daniel Day-Lewis would have been great because you could have been like stunt doubles. Yeah, he would have killed us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he was actually an inspiration. I watched my life really? for, for, for uh, research for uh, osteogenesis imperfecta really? and uh, brittle bone disease. But he's a little bit more um, outspoken in that movie. Uh, he's a little bit more, uh, hey, bring me my, uh, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> cool. Okay, I, I, I also got a suggestion, so I would have loved to see either Jared Padalecki or Jensen Eckert, you know them from Supernatural, they play Sam and Dean, and I think that would have been just awesome to have this. On Vikings. What if, what if like Sam and Dean traveled back in time? <laughs> like how cool would that be? Cool. Thank you for your question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great question. Do we have anybody? Thanks else? for answering it. I love you guys. You're awesome. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. There's a there's a Viking over here. I think that has a question on the right hand side. Go ahead. Yeah. Good morning. Um, I wanted to ask. Into the microphone, please. Yeah. It's me, cool. <laughs> Okay, I, I hope I'm close enough now. This is this is <laughs> nail. It's my it's my nail. It's too leise. Yeah. Kein Stress, mach nichts. Constantly comfortable while you were on the scenes, like Alex, who was digging a mud and felt completely home, or other uh, scenes or episodes where you said, "I took it back home. I had nightmares of. I was dreaming of it." It's something um, very special, and I would like to know a little bit about it. Maybe someone would like to open up. Yeah, was there? I, I mean. I, I can imagine it was not comfortable the entire time. Is there something that was really, like, stressful? Yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. I, I, physically, um, like I talked about the elements, sometimes it was cold, and, you know, I had to, we had to do some things that were quite extreme. I mean, Rollo himself, I mean, I've been baptized into a freezing cold lake, I've been thrown in the sea and keel-hauled and things like that. Um, 
I actually had a little trick. I never shared this with anyone in the cast. Um, for some of those days in season one and season two when it was really, really cold and something to do stuff, we were on the boats kind of having like uh, these ramps which they would cascade water onto us and stuff, onto this gimbal, this fake longboat, you know, in a storm. I used to get up in the morning at 4.45 in the morning, I used to have a cold shower for 20 minutes. I used to just get used to the temperature of the water and then I'd go to work and it worked. I would just sit there at work and I was like, I was already kind of prepared for it mentally. Um, and they used to joke, because Travis and me, Travis used to wear a wetsuit under his costume to, to stop himself from getting cold, but then when the sun came out in between takes, you'd end up sweating to death because you've got this big wetsuit underneath your costume. And I used to just, you know, try and act all butch in front of Travis and that, but that was the, that was the key. I was used to have freezing cold showers in the morning before I could work. Um, I said this yesterday, but maybe, I don't know if there's probably a lot of people here who wasn't there yesterday. Um, the thing is, when you're shooting like 12, 13, sometimes 14 hours a day, and you got to do something that's really, uh, really hard for you mentally, uh, you're actually more in that state than you are in your own kind of vibe. So it means that you're more, you're less yourself than you are the character some days. Um, so that is pretty hard to take that home, getting out of that thing. Yeah, so sometimes it was pretty rough. We had that drug addicted scenes and so on. It was quite heavy for me to watch it too. Yeah. Thank I you. <laughs> but it's, I think it's important to um, not bring these things home as an actor because otherwise you will be completely destroyed, just as Mark was saying. Like every single time you have to cry in the scene, you can't use your dead grandma because by the end of it, you're. Yeah, you will destroy that moment, you will destroy that memory, you will, you will neutralize it. It's very important to uh, understand and emphasize with your character and always defend them and you know, completely, completely stand behind them because then you can emotionally get to that place. But you're not that character. And um, I'm not a big method guy. I have all the respect for people who do it and all the actors out there that do it. I can't do it personally because it's, it, it will be too hard on me and my friends and my family and stuff like that. Uh, and, and to me, it's very important to separate those two things because otherwise you will mentally get very, very challenged. Vikings did, don't let it wait up, Vikings did change us all a lot. Like when we all first started, we were like trying to be healthy, eating salads, like go to the gym. Second meal out together, we were starting to eat ribs, we're getting messy, we've all got beards, ponytails. And like in Ireland when we went out, we all went out together. So you've got like 15 dudes with ponytails and beards walking into a restaurant. It does start to come home with you. Everyone does act a little bit more Viking, a little bit rougher, and it does make you tough around the edges. So you do bring things home with you as long as it's not in a detrimental way. Yeah. You take the fun stuff home. Uh, Alicia, did you have also a problem with your beard? <laughs> a huge problem, actually. But they shaved it in the morning. They were really good. The <laughs> <laughs> it was all fine. <laughs> Great question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, too. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so obviously the show is at least somehow uh, historical and sometimes even historically accurate. Um, so I just wanted to know when you got the roles the first time, did you look up the, the person that you were playing like in history, mythology, all of that? Or did you just kind of go in with no knowledge on who this person used to be? Mm. I can probably start that because I was one of the original cast members. So I got the script, um, two scripts written by Michael Hurst, and I remember Googling Lagartha, and there was this one little sketch and a poem, and that's it. It's like, and uh, I was trying to figure out, what is the shield made in? What does that look like? And, um, but now it's crazy that, that now, especially with all the history and with the archaeologist sites that have been dug up, they actually... Um, have proven that women were warriors and women were shield maidens, which is pretty amazing because the first two years I had a lot of press. All the interviews actually were, women actually did not fight. There were no such thing as shield maidens. And I'm like, uh-uh-uh-uh, they were. And now the proof is now coming out. So 
um, that was my story. And I did, I went to Sweden, and I actually visited um, just outside of, oh, what's the name of it? Where was it? No, um, gosh, it was this, this one archeologist, or this one site that was buried with two horse heads, and this king was upright, and it seems like he had all his treasures, and they actually found out through the DNA of the hips that it was a woman. And it was a, a, a woman, either queen or could have been Lagertha. And I was like, can I be holding Lagertha? So it was a pretty cool thing when that happened. Well, and it's awesome because this is a time in the world where like women were treated, you know, disrespectfully. And there's this this there's this notion that Vikings are savage, but women could own property. Actually, women, women were not treated disrespectfully. There was quite the opposite. Yeah, exactly. That's women I mean. were. Um, it was women were celebrated. They were just as equal as, as men. They, yeah, they definitely had keys to their own home. Yes. They were allowed to divorce their husbands. Exactly. They fought their men as much as anybody else. So yeah. Did anybody else? Besides history nerd Clive, did anybody else do some research on the world? <laughs> well, like, it was a bit weird because I played two different characters. And, and we had no idea I was going to play two different characters. No one knew. I didn't know. Michael didn't know. Um, so the second character I play, she did exist. There is information about her. Freydis doesn't actually... Like, there is a Freydis that existed, but it's not the one I'm playing. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I did try to do some research, but my two roles were, were a little bit more foggy around that whole thing. <laughs> Thank you. I can answer my, my behalf because uh, I play Harold and um, he's a well, the real Harold Feinherr, hot five, he was uh, he's well documented. He was the uh, the unifier of Norway, the first uh, first king to really unify the whole Norway. And he was uh, on the throne for, I don't know, 50 years and he died like when he was 80 or something crazy old at that time. So there's a lot of uh, uh, material of him. And of course, the, the Harold that I portray in, in the series is a uh, fiction slash reality kind of a guy. But uh, uh, I had a lot of material to dwell into. Uh, it, well, I had a little disease that I had to figure out. Uh, so uh, it's called osteogenesis imperfecta in Latin. It's brittle bone disease. And uh, I uh, do not suffer from brittle bone disease, so I had to do some research on that. And uh, I crawled around my hotel room uh, for three weeks and yelled Icelandic lines and stuff like that. That's one part of the research. Another one is the historical part, uh, which is uh, trying to figure out why is he called Ivor the Boneless, because there were a lot of different theories to that. Some said it had everything to do with impotence, and some say it was because he was weirdly flexible. And uh, I'm not weirdly flexible, so I'm happy we didn't go with that one. Um, <laughs> on top of that, it's, uh, it's, it's obvious that we have to go with the most dramatic, um, the most dramatic uh, 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 way to portray this character. And uh, that's obviously to give him a disease that should make him, uh, should leave him in the woods like Ragnar did to him, and should leave him dead pretty quickly. But it's just interesting to have a historical character you know are going to do some crazy, crazy stuff, and are going to accomplish a lot of stuff, and doing that while suffering from a horrible disease. So uh, that's just super interesting and a privilege for an actor to be uh, able to get your, your career going. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have a, an actual right wing over here on the, on the right hand side, your left hand side. Hi guys. I got Hi. a nice question for all of you. How long did it take in the hair and makeup chair to be ready for the show? <laughs> and which beards was real? And who once were fake hair? <laughs> my beard was real. The hair on my head was not, but on my chin was. Um, Thought so. I had a bright idea um, in season five that I wanted face and hand tattoos. Yeah. 
And I thought it would take five minutes to put them on and two minutes to take it off. It does not. It took hours. And for the people who want to know what that said on my face, it's actually a local Chinese takeaway menu that Tom McInerney, our amazing makeup artist, thought it'd be a funny joke to play. And then when I had a shirt off scene, we didn't know where it ended. So Amy just kept it going the whole way around. It's like, this looks ridiculous. And the inboxes, it looked mad, it looked crazy. But yeah, it probably took um, maybe two hours in the morning and then in the afternoon or when you finish work, you've got to sit with this cream on and let it dissolve all the tattoos on your hands, your face, and then you get home an hour after everyone else. So if any of you guys ever done a TV show, do not ask for face tattoos. It's like that. <laughs> That's the thing as well, it's not just how long it takes in the morning, it's usually the problem, like when you do a battle, you're covered in blood and mud and it's all in your hair and everything, at the end, everyone wants to go home. So they're really meticulous when they're putting them on in the morning and it takes a while, but then, we also, our studio, this is right, our studio was a, uh, it's, it's like a state-of-the-art studio which uses like wind power and water power and things, and so the solar power is meant to warm the water in the showers, it doesn't. So at the end of the day, I would always be covered in blood and mud and then you would sit there having a freezing cold shower and you'd come out to try and take your tattoos off and half the people have already gone home. And you're sitting there scrubbing on your own and then like Jordan said, it's like two hours later or sometimes you finish at four in the morning or something. And then you, know, you go outside and then your driver's there and like it's just, it's like a ghost town in the studio and you get home, do it all again in the morning, it's great. Some people didn't take them off. I went out with Marco quite a few Fridays after work, we'd go to a bar I said, why are people staring at him? He'd have blood behind his ear, on his hands. Looks like he just massacred a family and he's just sitting there having a happy time. I have a funny story actually. I, um, I, I was covered, it was one of those days where I, was, I had my top off and I was covered in blood and mud and all the body tattoos. And I had to go to, from Ireland to England to a Sea Shepherd charity ball where I had to wear a tuxedo. And a, so we were already an hour over filming and I had to, I had to literally rush to the airport. So I was like, Fuck it. Just get in the car, I'll, I'll clean it at the airport. So they gave me uh, like a bags of wet wipes, kind of like just soap and water. So I get a, I've got all my clothes on, I get to security, I've got blood around my ear and stuff. I'm thinking I look like I murdered someone and whatever. I got through, I got on the plane, I went into that little toilet of the plane, took off my clothes and started rubbing these wet wipes all over me. So I was washing that little tiny sink and it's a tiny little plane. I wash it and I literally look like someone had been murdered. It was like some kind of American psycho in this toilet. I tried to clear up as best as I could, but... And, I, and then I'm like putting this tuxedo on and you know, I go to the thing, but I just kept, I kept thinking this poor air stewardess or something is going to go in there at the end of the day and just be like, we've got to report a murder! Because it was like... <laughs> Uh, I remember trying to get beers in something called Fresh, it's like a supermarket in Ireland, and they wouldn't allow me to. And I was like, what? Do you want to see my ID or anything? She's like, no, no, we can't sell anything to you. It's like, what the hell? What is going on? And I had this full-on discussion with her, I was like, I'm, I'm, taking, the, I'm taking the beers. And she's going, no, no, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're not. I'm calling the guard, I'm calling the security guard. It's like, Jesus Christ. And I went home and I realized I didn't take my red, bloody contact lens out. <laughs> so I was all greased up, dirty, and I had like bloodshed eyes, just looking at the human beer, human beer. I was like, no, I'm not allowed to. <laughs> Three beers, please. I came down there like afterwards, like, I don't know, 15 minutes afterwards, where I take, took it all off, took a shower, and she must have looked at me like I was a walking miracle, like I just like, <laughs> fixed myself so quick. I was like, hey, how's it going? I like the beers now. <laughs> okay. I remember that. I actually directed that episode when you put the contacts in. And what's interesting about Marco is that he actually had um, with Tom, who did our prosthetics makeup, there were about three or four different contact lenses to show different stages, right? Like it was like a little bit of yellow, yeah. a little bit of red. I don't know how many you got through, but it was pretty remarkable that you could see the stages of him getting more messed up. <laughs> I can imagine the. Uh, yeah, it was rough, and also the fact that it's not supposed to cover like the people, like the iris of your uh, of your eyes. It's supposed to cover like the color of your eyes. So when you gotta take it in, you can't just put it on one finger and put it in. You have to like bend it and scoop it all the way in. So yeah, not very pleasant, but it looked good. So I'm happy about it. Did it look good, guys? It looked good. Thank you. Thank you. And 
another one on our left, your right. Hello. Hello. My question is for Jordan. Do you think that Uwe took a good decision to leave Ivar, and what do you think would happen if he took uh, Ivar's side? Uh, yes. I think I was technically I didn't leave. Yeah, I did leave Ivar. I like to say that he left me, but I left him. Um, I think that was the biggest split for me as an actor, with working with them. Like we never really worked together after that. But from a character basis, I think that Ivor was so about him and his destiny and his. It was about Ivor, whether Uber really wanted the Vikings to go on. I wanted a greater picture for all of them. I wanted to see where the Vikings as a whole could go, and I think it's ego that really destroyed a lot of them. They could just have missed five battles, they might still be ruling now, but that's what Uber's big decision was. So I think leaving them, he was lost at the time. I don't think he knew why he was leaving them. He just knew that wasn't the path that he wanted to go down. And as an actor filming that, it definitely changed my path as the character too. I think he went back to Kattegat and he was lost for half a season, but eventually he knew he had to follow in Ragnar's dream. He had to follow where he wanted to go. And he knew there was something bigger out there for him. And I think it's in like, Life now, like if you think something that is bigger for you, go chase it. Don't keep doing what you know is wrong. Go for something bigger. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome, man. Thank you. you know, and I think all of the all of the sons of Ragnar, when, when we meet them, they're all kind of a, a fraction of Ragnar. You, you know, Ivar is the the conquestor of Ragnar, and Buba was, you know, the farmer and, and wanted to just see the Vikings and. And uh, Fitzroy was the, the, the junkie. <laughs> Fitzroy was the junkie. Um, so yeah, you, you have to be different. You can't go the same way. And oh, there is Ragnar over here. Check it out. Hey, man. Hey, man. I don't have a question. I want to say a few words, if that's OK. Yes, a few sure. words. Because I think they have questions over here. Oh, only take a minute. Yes. So Vikings um, is a lot of more than a TV show for me. Um, I felt from the beginning that this is a special and deep connection to the Nordic mythology, to the music and especially to you, to the actors. And I think many of millions of fans feel the same way. So we are not uh, normal fans and normal actors, we are a big Vikings family worldwide. And years ago I was very ill and Vikings helped me a lot through this difficult and hard time. So I want to say uh, from the bottom of my heart, Thank you for your great acting, for your passion, for your love, uh, and for the best show in the world. Thank you. Thank you. And at least, at least, Alicia, you are so sweet and lovely, you have stolen my heart. The young lady on the left has a question, and I think that's our last one for today. Um, there's a gentleman that stepped right in front of her, right before she asked her question. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question. Yes, please. Is it a good thing that Peter killed Lagata, or it will make sense if Ivor did it? Is it a good thing if Fitz Fitzer killed um, Lagata, or should have I Ivor killed I think it was a good thing that Fitzer didn't, uh, like, Clearly, like story-wise, because I think everybody thought it was going to be Ivor. Uh, when the seer told us it's going to be one of Ragnar's sons that did it, so I think everybody thought it was going to be uh, Ivor. So for the, I don't know. I think it was good for the story, but I think for the drama, it would probably be crazier if Ivor did it. I I think it was a horrible thing because of course we don't want Lagatha to die, right? Of course not, right? I'm Magatha, it was time for her to go. <laughs> like, she was turning into a granny here. We had to put on the wig and then the age makeup. Um, truthfully, I originally just signed on just for a, a few years at the very beginning, but thanks to you guys and the most incredible fans, and thank you for that lovely speech that he said, is we would not be here without you. You are the reason why the show lasted seven years, so thank you. Robot lives and dies together. Robot about robot. And and it, from, from you guys here, who 
If you were in all seven seasons, raise your hand, please. What? What? <laughs> if you were in all se not seven, six, I'm sorry. It was like seven know? years. <laughs> if you were in all six seasons, raise your hand, please. Did I? <laughs> You're the only one to cast that was in every season. Was I? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, the only one that didn't die is Rolo. And and Marco. Oh, I didn't die. You didn't die. No, it was in the last season. I don't know. <laughs> you guys tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rollo was resting. Be, before we... <laughs> hey, yes. but it's the before, we, before we wrap up, our photographer Jenna has a question. There's Jenna, she's like, oh, don't put me on the spot. Jenna, um, Jenna wants to know if, if it's all right with the audience. Would the audience like their picture taken with the cast of Vikings? <laughs> Jenna, come on up here. Jenna. So what, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn around. Hey, Jenna. And we're gonna have the audience behind us and we're gonna do a big group photo, if that's okay. Hey, Jenna. Hello. <laughs> Get in the middle, Jenna. You guys wanna get up and come right up? Oh my god. And then we can take it from above, right? right? Yeah. We go down. Ja. Ist das den Stuhl stehen oder nicht? Ja, ich bin schon mal im Foto nicht On the count of three, everybody yell, Vicast. One, two, three.